What's up, everybody? Welcome to System Crafters. I'm David Wilson, and today we're going to learn how you can achieve advanced package management with straight.el. So I'm going to show you a different way to install all of the community packages that you use in your Emacs configuration with an alternative package manager called straight.el. Uh, we'll walk through all the main features that it provides and then take a look at how you would use it day to day. I'll also convert the Emacs from scratch configuration to use straight.el so you can see how to update your own config and use it with very little effort. So what is straight.el? Uh, straight.el describes itself as a next generation, purely functional package manager for Emacs. But what is that? I mean, that's kind of a cryptic thing to hear. Uh, it basically means that straight.el enables you to have more detailed control over how you manage the Emacs packages that you have in your configuration. Now, the whole purely functional part, you may have heard in reference to other package managers like Nix and Geeks. Uh, Straight does have some similarities in the way that it operates under the covers, uh, but we're not really going to look into that aspect of things uh, today. We're really going to look into the day-to-day uh, -day usage and how to, um, to understand what it's doing, really. Uh, so it accomplishes this by cloning the actual source repositories of all the Emacs packages that you use, regardless of whether you get them from Melpa, Elpa, or an arbitrary GitHub or GitLab repository. And since we're using the actual source repositories, we can be more explicit about which version, branch, or even commit that's used for each package, and even locking all the packages to specific commits. And this is sort of where the functional package management thing comes in, because if you can uh, lock all of your packages to specific commits, then you can achieve reproducible configurations, especially across multiple machines. So something that you could do with Geeks or Nix, you could actually do with straight.el if you only want to do that for your Emacs packages. So you can learn more about straight.el from its readme.md file. Uh, the readme file for straight is quite um, in depth. It's very long, it has a lot of sections, but it has a lot of very good information if you want to learn uh, more about the inner workings of straight.el. But today I'm going to give you enough of the information that you'll need to understand what it does and how to use it on a daily basis. All right, so let's go over the sort of the, the big ticket item features for straight.el and the reason why I think it's a, an interesting package manager. Uh, so this is an alternative to the built-in package.el package manager in Emacs. And it provides some useful benefits that you might be interested in. Uh, first of all, you have easy uh, package.el style package installation and upgrades. It's not exactly the same. It's not going to have the exact same workflow, but it's going to be similar enough that um, a person who's used to using package.el can get by with straight.el pretty easily. Uh, it also integrates with use package so that you can use uh, straight T as a parameter instead of ensure T. So if you've used use package uh, for managing your configuration, you know that use package can install packages for you using package.el. Well, straight.el is able to integrate with use package in the same way. So it just you basically just change one line of your configuration um, for each package that you install to use straight T instead of ensure T. So that's basically all that's required. Um, uh, well, for, for use package expressions, that's all that's required. Uh, and all El Melpa and Elpa packages are easily installable by name. I'll explain more about how this works in a bit, but all the packages that you can install with package.el, you can also install them with straight.el. Uh, you can also install Emacs packages from specific Git repositories, which is pretty useful if you find a cool package that's not actually on Elpa or Melpa yet. You can actually use straight.el to install that for you uh, just from the Git repository, and it works really well. Uh, you can even use your own forked versions of Emacs packages and merge improvements from the original repository. So let's say uh, you use a specific Emacs package, but you want to make some customizations to it. And uh, it's easier to do that in the source itself rather than trying to hack into the package using you know, um, advice or other things like that. Uh, you can make a fork of that package on GitHub or GitLab, and then you can use straight.el to install that forked package and also be able to merge improvements that are coming from the original package whenever that gets commits to it over time as well. It's more of an advanced uh, functionality that we'll talk about in another video, but I just want to throw that out there as a, uh, as a feature of straight.el. 
Uh, you can also use the cloned package repositories to make changes and send improvements back upstream. And what that means is that uh, when Straight installs a, an Emacs package, it will clone the Git repository locally, and you can actually go into the repo of that package and make improvements to the code, make commits into the repository, and then send those as pull requests or whatever to the original package author. Straight supports this as a uh, mainline feature, so it's actually really good for people who are doing package development or maybe making improvements to other people's packages. Uh, Straight enables that you to do that very easily. Uh, your package list can also be fully reproducible down to the exact commit of the Git repository where the package comes from uh, using only your init file and additional lock file, no other metadata needed. Uh, this is the point where you are able to get a very um, consistent and reprodu reproducible configuration across multiple machines because you can write out this lock file that has all the packages that you need with the specific commit involved so that when you sync those packages to another machine, you get the exact same versions of everything so that you don't get any surprises whenever you uh, install on a newer machine and maybe a bunch of packages have been upgraded and your configuration doesn't work with them. So this can help with that problem. So it may sound like straight.el is only meant for power users, but everyday use is very straightforward for any Emacs user. So don't be put off by some of these more complicated or advanced sounding features because you don't really have to even think about them if you don't use them. And that, that's sort of the power of straight. It's, it's sim simple for the, the base case, and then it gives you a lot of power for doing more advanced cases. So uh, since straight.el does not come with Emacs, we need a way to make sure it can be installed without using package.el. Since we're trying to get away from using package.el, we're going to skip using package.el to install it. In fact, you can't even install pa uh, straight.el using package.el. You have to use this uh, bootstrapping script that's provided by the authors of straight.el. Uh, and you, if you drop this into your init.el file, you will be able to uh, install straight. And then if you check this into your init.el file, any computer that you clone your Emacs config to, your straight will be set up automatically the first time that you run your config. So uh, it's very good to have this bootstrap script inside of your init.el file. So whenever you copy this into your config, you can either run it direct directly using eval region or just load Emacs and let Emacs take care of everything. And if it's if straight's already installed, this uh, bootstrapping script won't really do anything because it's already there. So you don't really have to worry about it installing things multiple times. So what we're going to do is try to get <clears throat> uh, straight.el set up in a basic Emacs configuration just to see the initial setup process. So this is a very minimal config that doesn't really have a whole lot. Uh, I'll jump into the init.el file here, and then I'll uh, jump down to the end of the file and then paste in the uh, the code that I just copied. And then I can uh, select this region of code and then use eval. Whoops, I'll have to select that again. I'm uh, not always so quick on the uh, we're going to use eval region so not so quick on the ba the bare Emacs key, key bindings the uh, built in key bindings okay eval region so now what's going to happen is um, Emacs is going to download this bootstrap.el script or even the install.el script and uh, it's going to take a little bit of time for it to do it because I have a very slow internet connection right now it might take a little bit of time it might be fast we'll never know uh, so what happens here is that it's, it's downloading the installation script and then running it so that straight can be installed into your own uh, Emacs configuration folder. So inside of the, the folder where you have your Emacs config, uh, there will be a straight folder that gets added and there's a lot of stuff that goes under that. So apparently for me now I'm having issues with the installation. So let me just try this one more time to eval region. Uh, wow. I wonder if my internet's out completely at the moment. Let's see. Let, let me pull up my panel. Sorry, I'm having to do this right now. Um, yeah, that's really weird. Let's try this one more time. Eval region. Okay, so uh, what, one thing that's been happening for me and the reason why I'm recording a video today and not doing a stream is that the location I'm currently at does not have very solid internet access. So sometimes things just fail for no good reason. Uh, it seems to be proceeding now uh, here and there. So we'll keep talking until it completes. Uh, so uh, whenever you finish installing straight, you'll see there's a straight folder in your Emacs config folder and a lot of uh, what straight does will, will install files into that folder. Uh, but the good thing about straight is that whatever you have in your init.el file will get replicated back into that straight folder if you ever delete it or maybe if you clone this configuration to another machine. 
So while that's working, uh, let's move on to the uh, the next slide and I can explain how this stuff works and then we'll go back and try out whenever the installation is complete. All right, so now that we've installed straight.el, or at least we're trying to install it, um, we can see how to install a package with it. Um, and this part is a little bit different than what you might be familiar with with package.el. Typically with package.el, you would run the uh, package install command and it would ask you what package to install. You install it there and then it's installed. And then anytime you start up Emacs, uh, that package will be available. So straight.el is a little bit different in that it depends on a source of truth for the list of packages that should be installed and loaded. And conveniently, it uses your Emacs configurations init.el file for this purpose. So uh, basically what I'm saying is um, straight, straight depends on you to have the packages that you want to have installed inside of your init.el file. And if, it, if the packages are not listed there, they're not installed and not loaded. So to install a package, you have to go into your init.el and add an expression like the one you see right here, where we're calling the straight use package function and we're giving it the, uh, the symbol called evil, which refers to the package for evil mode. And uh, what this does is it causes straight.el to install the package if it hasn't been installed already. And uh, if it hasn't been installed, it just sort of uh, skips it basically because the package is already there. It, it might uh, set the package up to be loaded, but it won't install it again. So it straight depends on this line being in your configuration in some form to acknowledge that the package is installed and used. And we'll discuss what that means a little bit later. So when you use this, straight will take care of downloading, compiling, uh, and adding the package to Emacs load path. And if you're using Emacs 28 with the new native compilation functionality, straight will cause your new package to be compiled to native code at the same time. Otherwise, it will be compiled to bytecode. Um, so one thing to point out here is that the function name straight use package implies some connection to the use package configuration macro system, whatever, but they're not actually related. Uh, and we'll look at how to integrate those later. I just wanted to point out that if you use straight use package, it doesn't actually take the same parameters as the use package function that you might be used to. So let's see if this completed. Okay. Once again, it's uh, failed to install. Let me try eval region one more time. Uh, if this keeps failing, I might switch to another config that already has a uh, straight setup a little bit already. All right. So, oh, okay. I think it's done now. Finally, we finished building straight. So I'm going to show you how to install that evil mode package using straight. We're going to uh, type in straight use package dash e or uh, um, single quote evil for the, the symbol for evil. And um, I'm going to run this and we're going to see whether it succeeds or not. So I'm going to use control X, control E to evaluate that. And uh, once again, we're getting weird installation problems. Uh, thankfully, I'm prepared for this, so it's not a complete dead end. So um, let's just skip over to the, well, actually, let's, let's, let's talk about some other things first. So um, you can, I'm gonna give you a little tip here. You can use the straight use package function to list the packages that you might want to install. I mentioned before that you need to have straight use package in your configuration for straight to work correctly, but you can use it as a command to list the packages that you might want to look into installing. Uh, if you've used the uh, package or list packages command that comes with package.el, you get this nice table that has all the packages you can install with descriptions about them, versions, etc. You don't get that same UI with straight.el. Um, you you basically just have to use straight use package to list all the possible packages that you have at your disposal, but uh, you don't get all the extra metadata. So you might have to go to the Melpa website or the Elpa website to search for packages for a specific topic to get information about those. But at least there's a way to look at them inside of uh, inside of straight. So if I use um, in my own configuration here, straight use package, I'm going to get a list of it looks like 8,000 items for the package recipes that are available to me from Melpa, Elpa, and Emacs Mirror. If I type in IV, it's gonna tell me all the packages with IV in the name. And the reason why this works is because I have Vertico installed, which allows me to filter down the number of items in this list based on the uh, these term that I type in. Uh, so if you have a good completion engine like Vertico, Selectrum, IV, Helm, etc., then uh, straight use package could be a nice way to look for packages that you might want to install, or at least to see if one that you know about is actually available. However, important to note, if you install a package, like if you select one of these packages and straight installs it, um, it will be available in your current Emacs session, but it will not be available the next time you start Emacs. Uh, this is because a package needs to be referenced in your init.el, like I mentioned before. So if you install a package like this, um, definitely make sure to, to include it in your knit.el using straight use package in your source code of your config to make sure that straight will load it the next time that you uh, install it. 
Um, let me just check one thing really quickly. All right, cool. So um, I want to talk about uh, package recipes because this is actually uh, how Straight knows where to get the Git repositories for all these packages. Since, like I mentioned before, Straight is actually installing the Git repositories of the packages that you use rather than just pulling down a pre-made um, targz package like Melpa and package that EL provides. Um, so. Straight uses another type of package called a recipe repository package, which contains all the details on where the sources of many packages can be found. And there's a few recipe repository packages that uh, Straight already knows about. Uh, the first one being the Melpa package, which uses packages or the recipes found at the Melka, Melpa package repository. And we can go take a look at that really quickly. Uh, if you go to the Melpa repo, there is a recipes folder. And then if you go to each of these files represents a specific Emacs package. And if I were to go to, let's say the AVI package and click on the AVI file, we can see this is actually an Emacs Lisp file that has a list inside. Uh, the first thing being the, the name of the package or a symbol for the name of the package here, AVI. Then the repo of the package, which is abo abo slash AVI. And this is actually the username of the, the author of the package and the package repo name. And the fetcher is for GitHub. So what's saying here is that the Avi package comes from GitHub, uh, basically github.com slash abo abo slash Avi. So what Straight does is it can pull down these repositories with all these uh, package recipes that come from Melpa, Elpa, etc., and then use Straight's own internal behavior to clone the GitHub repository and then install that package locally for you. So you're not getting pre-built uh, package binaries, you're getting the actual source and then compiling it locally inside of Emacs. Uh, there's also the GNU Elpa mirror and the Emacs mirror mirror uh, to get packages from Elpa and the Emacs mirror, which is basically like a collection of mirrored repos for well-known Emacs packages, just in case they happen to disappear one day. So it's good to have that around. Um, you can also get the recipe for any package inside of straight.el. Like let's say if you wanted to understand what package, uh, what recipes look like, you can use the straight get recipe command to get a package for let's say org mode. So if I were to run uh, straight uh, get recipe, then I can type in org and then it will copy the uh, recipe to the, uh, the kill ring and I can go paste it in. So basically what that looks like is this here. We see that we have a list that has org as the first item. Uh, the type of the, the recipe, the repo where it comes from, et cetera, et cetera. So basically, um, these recipes are all sort of baked into straight.el after they pull these recipe repositories, and that's how it knows where to go fetch the code for those. All right, so let's talk about uh, how you can install a package directly from a Git repo if you happen to find one that is not on Melpa or Elpa. So Straight makes it really easy to install these using a, uh, a form of recipe that's very much like the Melpa recipes. And uh, if you pass one of those directly into straight use package, you can install a package like my .crafter.el package. So here we see that we're calling straight use package. Uh, we're saying that .crafter is the name of the package. We're saying it comes from GitHub and it's uh, from davywheel slash .crafter.el. So basically what we saw before. Also, you can um, say what the branch is for that repo. So if maybe there's a mul multiple branches where they're doing uh, feature development in parallel or something, you can specify the specific branch that you want to pull the code from. So that could be useful if you're doing uh, package development or maybe tracking, let's say version two of org Rome or something like that. Um, so you might wonder why you wouldn't just set up uh, a recipe like this for every single package. Oh, well, in my opinion, it's better to use the predefined recipes for packages that come from Melpa, etc., because they have a lot of extra configuration in the recipe that you probably won't know to put in there. So it's better to just use those pre-made recipes so that you can install and load the package correctly. So there's some other parameters that you might use in these repo recipes. Uh, we'll, we'll cover those in another video, but I've got a link to them here in the show notes just in case you wanted to check those out. So upgrading packages. Straight.el allows you to upgrade packages either individually or all at once. Uh, package upgrades are performed by pulling a newer version of a package from the associated Git repository. Uh, so there's a few commands that you can use for this purpose. The first one is straight pull package, which is going to pull a single package to upgrade it to the latest version. Uh, so if we were to run straight pull package, what it's going to do is give me a list of all the packages that I currently have installed in my configuration so I can pick one of those to be upgraded. It's not going to give me the entire list of packages that are possible because I don't have all, all of them installed. It will only tell me about the ones I currently have. So this, this can be a nice way to see what you have installed. There's also straight pull package and depths, which will install, uh, update the package that you tell it to update 
plus all the dependency packages that they pull in because many packages have dependencies on other pa other packages and you want to make sure that all the dependencies are also updated just in case a newer version of your package depends on some functionality that's in a newer version of one is one of its dependencies and then there's also straight pull all which will upgrade all of the packages that you currently have and all the dependencies for those packages and typically you probably want to do it this way just to make sure that everything is all up to date and there's no incompatibilities with with different versions of different packages especially ones that share the same dependencies so just keep that in mind usually it's the safest to run straight pull all uh, now keep in mind that pulling or upgrading a package does not take effect immediately uh, whenever you restart Emacs, Straight will rebuild and load the latest versions of all the packages that you've installed. So typically the process whenever you want to upgrade your packages is that you run Straight Pull All and then you restart Emacs so that Straight will then rebuild those versions of packages and load them fresh. Now, uh, you can actually activate the upgraded version of a package while Emacs is running by using the straight check package command. And um, what this does is check to see if, the, if a particular package has had files updated that have not been, uh, there's not been a build of that package that has occurred since those files were updated. So if you call uh, straight pull package or straight pull all, then you can use straight check package or even the straight check all command to check your packages and then rebuild them if necessary. And, and I think what happens is whenever it rebuilds that package, it will reload the package at the end of, uh, of that rebuild cycle. I could be wrong about that, but when, with my limited testing, it seemed like that was happening. Um, however, I don't really recommend doing this, uh, mainly because if you upgrade a package that's already been installed in Emacs, it might have different functionality that aren't set up in the right hooks, and you might end up with weird errors that you don't expect to see. So typically, it's much more safe to run straight pull all and then just restart Emacs so that straight can have that chance to, to rebuild the package and load it fresh for your new session. So removing a package. Uh, removing a package is a little bit different than what you know from package.el because there's no explicit uninstall command for removing them. Uh, instead, what you do is you just take the line for straight use package for that package out of your configuration, and then all of a sudden uh, it doesn't get loaded anymore. Uh, I'm going to see if I can try this, but I got a feeling it's not going to work. Let's, let's see if I can clone evil and let it do its thing. I'll talk a little bit more until that gets finished. Hopefully it works. Um, so if you comment out that line for straight use package that we have here, um, what happens is whenever straight, whenever Emacs is starting up, straight is sort of watching to see which lines of straight use package that you use. And when you call straight use package, it will set up the Emacs load path to include that package that you're telling it to load. But if you never call straight use package for a particular package, the place where that package got installed does not get added to the Emacs load path. So it won't be available at all in your session. Uh, so it's effectively like uninstalling the package and it's kind of nice to have it that way because you don't have a bunch of um, Packages sitting around that are being you know silently loaded whenever you start your Emacs config It only pulls in the ones that you actually have in your configuration So you may be thinking well are there gonna be a bunch of repositories kind of hanging around whenever I do this If I if I take them out of my config will they get deleted? Uh, by default no those won't get deleted and it's kind of a good thing in case you're trying to just like remove a package temporarily and then adding it back. But if you do want to clean up all those unused repositories, there is a command for that called straight remove unused repos. And I'll tell you that this is a fairly new command. Uh, it used to be in another uh, side package that comes with straight called straight X, but they I think they recently just made it a part of straight itself. So if you can run uh, straight uh, remove unused repos, what it will do is take its knowledge from this current session about which packages were actually loaded, go look at all the repository folders, find ones that have not been loaded in the session and then delete them so that they don't take up space on your hard drive. So that's something worth knowing if you do want to clean up packages that uh, are no longer being used. And this, uh, this cloning evil is taking a while. Um, let's actually jump over to the Emacs from scratch configuration. Yeah, that's not gonna work very well. We'll try this again a little bit later and I'll make that point whenever we get to it. All right, so uh, integrating with use package. So if you use use package to simplify your configuration patterns, uh, you can easily set up straight.el to be used with it. And thankfully it's a single line operation to do that. You have to just say straight use package and then you just pass use package as a name of the package to install. And I think that um, there's some built-in behavior into straight. I'm guessing there's built-in behavior in straight that recognizes that you're installing this package and then it will set 
up a, an integration for straight into use package so that you can now use uh, colon straight T to cause use package to install a package using straight.el. I'm saying package way too many times. Sorry about that. But unfortunately, the topic sort of compels me to do that. Uh, so if you would like use package to automatically install all the packages that you reference without the need to add, uh, let me actually change this because it's supposed to be straight T. Uh, you can replicate the same behavior um, with the following settings. So if you set straight use package by default to T, then um, whenever you use use package, you don't have to, to use straight T anymore. It will just automatically install the package using straight. Uh, so that is similar to the use package always ensure setting that I showed how to use in the uh, Emacs from scratch series to make things a little bit easier because otherwise you have to say ensure T on every single use package expression. And it's kind of annoying to do that. So uh, if you want to make things a little bit simpler for yourself, you could definitely use this setting to have the same behavior from straight.el. Um, We'll, we'll show this whenever I go into the uh, setting this up in the Emacs from scratch configuration. Uh, for now, we'll just kind of uh, keep moving forward. Uh, so locking package versions. If you'd like to have a more consistent and repeatable configuration across multiple machines, you can create a lock file, which ensures that all of the packages you install are locked to specific commits of the associated package repositories. Uh, to generate such a lock file, you can run the straight freeze versions command. And this is going to generate, generate a file in your Emacs config folder called uh, straight slash version slash default.el, which contains contents that look like the following. So basically, it's just a an Emacs Lisp uh, file that has a list of pairs of a package name and the commit hash for the version of the package that was installed by straight on the current machine. So if you commit this file to source control, then when you sync the files to another computer that uses your Emacs config, it will install the same versions of those packages whenever it tries to pull those packages down. Um, and uh, it's, it's a really nice way to make sure that um, on two machines, you're gonna have the exact same versions of everything so that your configuration works the exact same way on both machines. Otherwise, you might get newer versions on one machine and then you get weird errors. So this is a good way to um, to, to prevent that from happening. But keep in mind, this does not happen by default. If you want this to, to be the case, you need to run that straight freeze versions command and check in the resulting file to your source control so that straight will obey it. And you will also need to run this command to update that lock file anytime you update your packages. I'm pretty sure that straight will not update this file for you automatically. So uh, anytime that you do a package update, you might need to run straight freeze versions again uh, to ensure that that file stays up to date with your latest uh, updated packages. So uh, if you pull your updated lock file to another machine and straight does not install those same commit versions that you have in your lock file, you might need to run the uh, straight thaw versions command that I mentioned here to make sure that uh, straight keeps those versions in sync. I'm not exactly sure uh, what the circumstances are under which you would need to use this because I don't actually use package freezing myself. But I just want to let you know that if if it seems like straight is not pulling the same versions of packages, try running straight thaw versions after you pull updates to your dot files to your other machine so that you make sure that those uh, packages are uh, in sync on the same versions. Now, I do want to uh, throw out one important note. Uh, the package freezing behavior requires you to set up your configuration in a way where the straight use package lines are executed consistently every time Emacs loads. Um, this is really important because straight only knows which packages you've installed by seeing which packages you've, you've called with straight use package. So if you put some of your calls to straight use package behind code that doesn't get loaded during the initial init uh, loading process. If like, for instance, if you have a hook that calls straight use package later at some point, like after you've opened some specific type of file, then straight will not know that that, sh that package should be included with your locked packages as far as I know. And you might even get errors based on that because what it will see is that your package package repos folder has packages in it that are not in its own internal knowledge base of which packages have been loaded in this session because you haven't loaded that specific package yet. So um, the best way to write your configuration to make sure that this pack package locking works correctly is to make sure that you always call straight use package to make sure your packages are installed, uh, even if you're not loading the functionality from that package until later with a hook or something. Uh, just keep that in mind because you'll save yourself some headaches down the road whenever you're starting trying to look into this. 
If you go check out the documentation link that I have here, they have some explanation for why this is the case and some other things to keep an eye out for. So if you ever run into this problem, definitely check this link and, and see what it says there just to, uh, to make sure that you know uh, what to do next. Okay, so now here is the most important part of the video. Uh, I'm going to show you how we can convert an existing configuration to use straight.el. And we're going to use the Emacs from scratch configuration to do this. Uh, so you can use both package.el and straight.el at the same time, but I don't recommend it. And the reason why is because you don't want to have uh, packages from multiple sources installed at the same time. Uh, this can cause weird problems that you might not be able to fix very easily. So if you want to try out straight.el, I highly recommend just, do, just doing a full conversion of your configuration to use that instead of package.el just to make sure that everything loads correctly and you don't have any weird uh, compatibility issues between packages. So uh, we're going to pull up the Emacs from scratch configuration and we're going to convert that to use uh, pack, sorry, straight.el instead of package.el. So let's pull that up really quickly. I'm going to load up uh, my Emacs from scratch config. Don't worry about the command line that I'm using for this. It's something I'm doing with uh, Kimax and, and Geeks. So uh, here, if I pull up the Emacs from scratch folder and the Emacs.org file, if you follow the Emacs from scratch series, this is sort of the state of the configuration at the end of that series. Um, I have a section below for uh, package system setup. And as you can see here, we're using package.el, uh, setting up the package archives and setting up use package. So what we're gonna do is just delete all this current configuration and replace it with straight.el. Um, so I have some steps here that you can follow to do this uh, in a relatively clean way. So first of all, what you're gonna wanna do is um, delete or move your old ELPA folder where your uh, package.el packages are installed. You might need to close Emacs to do this, but uh, we're going to try doing it without uh, closing Emacs just to see what happens. So I'm going to go into my uh, projects code Emacs from scratch folder. And uh, we have an ELPA uh, folder here. I'm just going to move ELPA to uh, ELPA back just in case we have any problems. I'm going to move it to a backup folder. Um, and this will make sure that the ELPA packages don't get loaded up whenever we start Emacs. We want to make sure that the straight packages are the ones that get uh, started up. So now what we want to do is add the bootstrap script that I showed you before. Uh, so I'm going to jump out of the presentation really quickly. I'm going to go back up here and grab this bootstrap script that I showed you. Uh, I'll copy this and I'm going to go drop it into this configuration right here. Uh, and the next thing is to um, replace all instances of insure with straight, with colon insure to colon straight. And what that will do is, oh, I think I missed, yeah, I missed one step here. So uh, add uh, straight use package, use package. So you need this step to make sure that use package integration is set up. So let me add this here, actually, uh, straight use package, use package. Okay, so now what we can do is go replace those instances of ensure with straight. And the reason why we do this is because this is how use package will know to tell straight to install those packages instead of, um, uh, instead of using package.el. So I'm gonna use um, the power of evil mode here to do this. Uh, I'm gonna change ensure to straight across all the, the lines of the file. Uh, there seem to be 10 matches, so I'm just gonna go run that really quickly. Um, also, one thing to note, if you have a package that is um, a built-in package and you're using use package, you can also use straight nil, just like you were using ensure nil before to make sure that uh, straight.el or use package doesn't try to install this package that already is a built-in package of Emacs. So just throwing that out there. Um, so we've, we've updated all those references now. And um, now I'm going to, let's see. Uh, okay, so if you use use package always ensure, replace it with straight use package by default. I'm gonna do that because it's what we were using in the Emacs from scratch configuration. So set queue straight, uh, what was it called? Straight use package by default. Straight use package by default T. And then um, what you can do now is, uh, let's see, it seems like I've already, yeah, this, I waited until later to do this part, which makes sense. So um, what we'll do now is we'll close this Emacs config. And I'll let you know in advance, I cheated a little bit here because I knew I was gonna have problems with bandwidth. So I've already got a straight folder that's already set up. So it's gonna look like this installs really quickly and really easily, but that's because I already have a fully cloned straight folder already. And I'll show you that in a second. So now, oh, 
did I, um, let me make sure that the uh, config, well, we'll see what happens whenever I load it up. So I'm gonna run uh, this Emacs from scratch config. All right, so it says loaded in 1.85 seconds. It seems like nothing different really happened. Uh, let's try looking at the evil mode uh, command. Is that gonna be here? Uh, let's see. All right, let's try a different one maybe. Mm, uh, Python mode. I'm trying to look for a, a function that will give me the source location. In fact, I could probably just call load library or find library. Okay, Python mode. Uh, let's see. Yes. Now we can see that this file is actually coming from my Emacs from scratch folder slash straight slash repo slash Python mode slash Python mode So it definitely seems like all the packages are being loaded from straight.el. Now, what I did, like I said, was a little bit of a cheat because I already have a straight folder. If you do this process that I just showed you, it's going to take a little while for straight to clone all those repositories, build all the code, and then get everything to a, a loaded spot. But once that happens, it's going to be done. And every time you load Emacs, it will load just as fast as what you saw here before. So uh, it will not be um, a very long loading process. Uh, so you, you'll only have to do that installation the, the first time. All right, so let me load the emacs.org back up. And uh, all right, so let's go and look at the config one last time here. So that's all it really took. And the amount of config required to set up straight.el is basically the same as what it took for package.el. Nothing really that complicated. This bootstrapping snippet here looks a little bit nasty because it's kind of a lot of code just to get straight set up, but you never really have to touch it. Once you have it here, as far as I can tell, like they never update the snippet, so you can just keep it here and forget about it, and uh, everything will work the way that you expect it to. Let's see, what else do I wanted to say about that? Yeah, so um, the other nice thing about straight.el is when it's installing all those packages, you're going to get a lot of nice messages in the echo area telling you which package, which package it's currently installing and whether it's installing dependencies of a package. So um, it's kind of nice to watch that process happen because you can tell what's going on at any given moment. And if there's any problems that happen whenever straight tries to install something, it will give you a buffer you can go read to see what the error was, so it, which can be pretty helpful if you're trying to diagnose an issue with, let's say, your network connection or something like that. Um, so that was basically it. Let me just take this snippet here and copy it over to the show notes, um, uh, the final um, uh, config, just to make sure that people can copy what I just did here and not have to go and, and type it in by hand. Um, so that's all it took. You just make sure that you uh, clean up your old ELPA folder to make sure that those those packages don't get loaded. Uh, add the straight.el bootstrapping uh, snippet. Um, set up use package using straight.el. Uh, configure any extra settings you want to set up for straight, and then make sure that any of your packages that use uh, colon ensure get set to use colon straight instead. Like for instance, Python mode here, we're using straight t instead of ensure t. That's all it takes. Uh, that's just basic package management with straight.el. And then now you'll have all those repositories cloned down. And uh, in fact, we can just take a really quick look at those just to uh, see what they look like. Let's jump to a projects code Emacs from scratch and then go into the straight folder. If you go look at the repos folder, all of the repositories for all of the packages that you've installed will be listed here. And if you wanna go into the Python mode folder, it's just a Git repo. And you can see there's a Git folder here as well. So um, if you wanted to make changes to the Python mode package, you could go into this folder, change any of the code here. This is an actual Git repository. So if I, if I use uh, magic status, you'll see this is a real repository that I can do Git operations on. And uh, that's sort of the power of using straight is now you have more control over what happens with your package folders. And you're not just a passive consumer of packages anymore. You can actually be actively um, changing the packages and contributing to the packages using what you've already installed in Emacs. Makes it quite a lot easier in my opinion. All right, so let's jump back into the presentation org present. So uh, now that we've talked talked about all the functionality provided by straight.el, let's talk about why you might want to try it. And maybe, maybe it seems weird to talk about this at the end, but now I want to motivate you to go give it a shot. So maybe you'll want to try straight.el because you prefer having a stable configuration, which won't be randomly broken by unexpected package upgrades. This does tend to happen from time to time whenever you use Emacs. Uh, one other weird thing that happens from time to time is that you try to use a, a new package and then package.el will give you some weird error saying it can't find the tar.gz file for the package you're trying to install. And that's because your package uh, recipes are out of date. So, um, 
uh, you have the problem less of the time with straight.el. You may still have it because you do need to update your package recipes, but straight pull all will do that for you. You don't have to really worry about it. So uh, you'll have less problems with this kind of thing with, with straight.el. Uh, if you also develop Emacs packages or you maintain your own forks of existing Emacs packages, straight.el will make things a lot easier for you and you'll have a much uh, better time, a much more uh, pleasant experience doing that. And also, if you need to use packages that are not in Melpa or Elpa, in my case, I use a couple packages, uh, .crafter.el and the OBS WebSocket package by Satachua. Uh, both of those are not in Mel Melpa, so I use straight.el to install those directly from the Git repository, and I can have those checked into my Git config and use them across multiple machines. So I don't have to like clone the repo myself and then add it to my load path. Straight.el takes care of all that for me, which is very nice. Um, and that said, if all the packages that you use can be found in Melpa or Elpa and you don't do any package development yet, uh, straight.el might not be worth a switch uh, until you start having those needs. Uh, package.el will be just fine for you until then. However, there's really no major downside to trying straight.el if you want to, if you don't have any of those needs. I would say give it a shot and it's very easy to switch back to package.el if you need to. So it's really not a big loss if you try it and you don't really like it. Uh, so if you want to see detailed comparisons between straight.el and other Emacs package managers, uh, there's a section of the readme that you should really check out because it's got very in-depth analysis of the difference between those different package managers. So check out this link in the show notes to go find that. Um, you might learn a few things about uh, how the different package managers work, which is pretty useful, I think. Okay, what's next? So we've covered most everything you need to know about straight.el to use it on a day-to-day -day basis. So if you've got any questions or tips you want to share about straight.el, please feel free to leave them in the comments and I might make a follow-up video to cover those. I'm also considering making a video to show how you can use straight.el to manage your own custom forks of Emacs packages and also use it in a package development workflow. So let me know in the comments if you'd also be use, uh, interested in that. So before we go, I would like to thank my sponsors. Uh, these people have made it possible for me to continue making videos about GNU Emacs, GNU Geeks, and other related topics. I'm very thankful to them for their support. Uh, if you're interested in supporting the work that I do, definitely check out the links I have in the description below. I'm on both uh, GitHub sponsors and Patreon. And uh, also, if you want to do a one-time tip, you can do that using the link to PayPal below. You can also do it on, on GitHub sponsors if you like. Uh, if you're not interested in sponsoring or uh, con contributing in that way, definitely uh, liking this video and sharing it with other people is a very good way to help out because it helps both with the YouTube algorithm and helps for other people to find it. Um, so yeah, I, I really hope that you enjoy trying out straight.el. Let me know in the comments what you think about it. And I'll definitely do a follow-up video at some point to cover the more advanced aspects of it. But until then, thanks so much for watching and uh, happy hacking. We'll see you next time.